the introduction. I'm Simon, and today I'm presenting research that was actually not done by me alone, but I did it with um, quite some colleagues from our industry partner and some students who supported me a lot. So I want to thank, thank them at this point that they uh, supported this research. First of all, I want to take a look at a bit of the bigger picture because, before I go into any details, because when we look at our built environment today, we probably realize that we are building a lot of new structures and for every structure or every facility that's being built, there are usually a lot of models or plans. And sometimes when you, when you look at the reality and when you look at the models and the plans, you realize that those are not necessarily consistent. And especially when you have older structures and you look at the plans, then sometimes people, when they are renovating something, are realizing, okay, this shouldn't be here and there should be something, but it's not on the plan. So there might be a general problem that there is inconsistency between our models, drawings, and the actual reality. And this is probably true for all aspects of the built environment, but we were looking at this especially in the railway, railway equipment sector. This happened in scope of the so-called RIMCOMP research project, which basically deals with integrating BIM methods into the railway sector or more especially into the railway equipment sector. So everything that's not the actual railway track, but everything that's next to the track, like the signals, um, the, 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 the technical equipment of the, of the switches, the balises, and so on. So there are quite some elements that need to be taken into account. And we are working on that with two industry partners, AC3 Germany, which is probably well known in the community, and Signon is one of the main firms in Germany planning and building railway infrastructure. And well, there should be another video which I'm simply going to skip, of course, um, this really doesn't work. So what we are, uh, our basic motivation is now that we have around 33,000 kilometers of railway tracks in Germany which don't have any consistent or correct documentation. There are about 4.3 million plans that the Deutsche Bahn has, and the administration basically told them you have to check those plans, you have to revise those plans, and you have to make sure that those plans are correct. And they actually have like a special task for, force for doing that, but they are a bit overwhelmed at the moment. And of course, it's kind of necessary for servicing railway security, renovating projects, and so on, to have consistent data. So in the research project, we were actually looking at how we could at least semi-automate this process in terms of comparing if what's on the drawings somehow matches what's on the actual tracks. And usually this is done by people walking along a railway track and measuring the distance and then counting the symbols. So of course the railway track has to be closed. Um, it takes a lot of time. I mean, somebody has to walk 33,000 kilometers in the end. So it's a very labor intensive process. And our approach to automating that consists of two parts. There is the part that I'm actually gonna present now and I want just to give a brief introduction to the other part, the actual collection of real world data. Real world, da um, real world data. So we actually mounted cameras on trains which take videos of a train track while the train drives along the track, so this um, is much faster. And then we use another machine learning approach to detect, to automatically detect certain elements or objects of railway equipment in those videos, then we can, um, by GPS coordinates and uh, the kilometers um, um, along the railway track, we can um, export the, the types and the places of the elements that we find. But on the other hand, we also have to look at the plans and to make the process of recognizing symbols in uh, rail, technical railway drawings easier because when you look at those drawings, this is only a very small part of it. When you look at probably the 4.3 million drawings, then they are kind of, as I said, overwhelming. You have a lot of different symbols which are in a lot of different places. And this is actually quite nice to look at because some of those plans are just like 
there are so many symbols in so many places that um, it's really hard to figure out what's going on here. So this, the status of the documentation is probably not that great. So we were looking at how could we help people who have to look like a, a, a huge plan, how can we help them, help them to at least not having to search for every symbol that's on the plan and then mark it and then um, enter the, the kilometer data and the type of the symbol and so on. And therefore, first of all, we had some previous approaches. We used general computer vision techniques like template matching, contours, cascade classifiers to locate the symbols on the, on the drawings, but in the end realized that this didn't give us the results that we wanted because depending on the symbols, depending on size, rotations, or sometimes on a symbol that's kind of like a, a overlap by another symbol and so on, those simply didn't prove to be very good in terms of the results. And since machine learning is quite well researched at the moment and it does help a lot in detecting things or objects or certain patterns on images, we decided to go into that direction. Therefore, we actually created quite a nice software tool that allows the user to read plan data in different formats. Then we have a user interface where the user, where, well, basically the, the, the automated location of the symbols is done, and in the end, the user can check every every hit that we've got and then enter additional information that is next to the symbol, for example, in terms of the kilometer at the, along the track that the symbol is on. And in the end, this information is put out. But of course, the interesting part is how do we actually detect the symbols and the plants? And therefore, we use a convolutional neural network. And I'm going to briefly introduce how the network works. But actually, the really interesting part, what we figure out in the end, is that we tried or we successfully, in my opinion, we successfully tried to auto, at least semi-automate the training process because honestly we didn't want to uh, label a thousand or a hundred thousand images in a lot of plans, so we were looking into different ways. The network itself um, basically cuts our image in certain regions of interest and each region of interest is basically put as a grayscale a matrix with grayscale values in the convolutional layers of our, um, of our network. It then goes through max pooling layers. The layers are flattened. In the end, it goes to certain uh, fully connected layers, which create the output that uh, we want. So the, the number of locations in a certain region of interest and the actual coordinates of the symbol in this region of interest, and of course there by the coordinates that are actually the coordinates of the symbol in the plan. And as I said, this is described really well in the paper, but the most important thing is how we create the training data. Because when we looked at symbols, we realized, okay, symbols are not like cat pictures where all the cats look quite different. Um, but they usually look very, very similar. They kind of vary in size. Sometimes maybe something like corners cut off and so on. Sometimes they are rotated. But when you, when you look at the picture here on the left side, then the symbols are somehow very, very similar. So we decided, okay, let's try to create a lot of different versions of a certain symbol. We do that by first uh, redrawing the symbols, some, uh, redrawing a symbol in in a drawing, drawing program, basically, um, for five or six times, and then we are, we are stretching those, we are uh, rotating those, and so on, uh, and stretching those um, only horizontally, only vertically, and so on, to create a huge variety of training data for one symbol. We place that on a background image that has, like, parts of plans, um, other pictures to just create a huge variety of training data. Then we use this data to train the network and then we use actual symbols that have been cut out of a real plan to test the performance of the network. We retrain and so on until we reach, um, um, which, um, reach a point when our results are uh, well enough for us. And we are actually not only training one network, but three networks, because the first network looks at one region of interest, 
and then decides if there is zero sim no symbol in this region of interest, one symbol or two symbols. We limited it to two symbols because depending on or with the region of interest that we chose and with the plans we looked at, there are almost never any more than two of the same symbol in one of the regions of interest. So when the first network, the first CNN, detects that there is one symbol in a certain area um, region of interest, then the actual coordinates, then a, sec um, a second network is used or is triggered that gives as an output the actual coordinates in terms of pixel where the center of the image is located in a region of interest and if there are two symbols found in one region of interest then of course this network gives out the locations for those two symbols and this uh, like this approach improved our results very much because in the first place we just were trying to figure out how many symbols are in one region of interest and um, where they are in one network and there the results didn't really um, go into any direction where it was something that we could actually use with, a, with some certainty. So we, we looked into other approaches and came out with this in the end and had quite good results actually. And now I'm gonna switch to the video, which basically shows the workflow in the tool that we developed in terms of training and of detecting. So usually a user can um, add a new neural network by loading the test symbols. So the symbols that have been actually cut out from, uh, from a real plan and then the symbol images which are the symbols that have been manually drawn. And then of course it takes some time and you can enter a lot of variables like the, the time, the time, the epochs that you want to train the networks with, um, the, uh, how, the, how the symbols are resized, how they stretch it, stretch the number of filters that we use and so on because for each symbol it makes sense to adapt the values if the, if the results are not very well. This process of creating the da training data then takes maybe like two or three minutes and the actual training of the network on a computer, basically a laptop that I work on, takes about two hours. So to create a network for a new symbol that where the user basically only has to create five to ten symbols manually by drawing or cutting them from a plan, um, leads to a two hour process of training for a new symbol and then the user can upload plans into our tools and start the, well, the scanning process for all symbols or only for a certain symbol. And this of course also takes like a couple of seconds or minutes depending on the number of plans and the size of the plans. And then the user can go through all the hits and add certain comments. This is actually something that we're working on to, in terms of also to um, support the process of entering the, the, the kilometer numbers for a certain symbol so that um, an OCR mechanism, for example, would detect the actual text on the plan and so the user wouldn't have to input it manually. And now I'm gonna switch back to the PowerPoint presentation. And in the end, we had results like this. This was actually at the time when, we, when I handed in the final paper. By now, we have improved them a lot by, for example, we had the problem that some symbols are not very square shaped, but kind of long not like this, but more like that. And we had to adapt our um, region of interest size so that it kind of matched the actual, the actual, um, the, uh, the, the, the layout or basically the, the size of a symbol that we were looking for. But in general, for some symbols, we had really good results. We had almost no false negatives, so nothing was missed because in the end, that's the thing that shouldn't happen, that a symbol is not found on a plan. And of course, in some other cases, we had false positives in about 10%, but as I said, we have been improving this by post and pre-processing the plans by a lot. And in some cases, we really have plans where we find all the symbols of a certain type, and therefore this works very well, especially when we use it compared with the, with the other project, which looks at the real world data, because in the end, we then have their data, 
basically in an Excel sheet in the end, which says what type of symbol or um, what type of object is on which kilometer on a train, on a certain train track. We have the same information from the plan, and we can just like put those lists next to each other and check if a symbol is there or if it is there on both, um, like in the real world data and on, in the plan data, or if it's maybe missing in the plans and so on. I mean, there are certain, um, there are various possibilities of what could have happened, but in the end we can easily match the, or check the consistency of all the plans. And while I would not say that it's a completely automated approach because um, the user still has to, for example, input the, the kilometers or sometimes the type of the symbol in our tool, at least in terms of when we are looking at 4.3 million plans that have to be checked. It, if it's only 10% of the manual work that's gonna be reduced in the end, it, it's not that bad, I think. And therefore, we are still working on that. And actually, the company that we are doing this research project with it will hopefully support the, the German railway authorities in terms of uh, checking all their plans to see if they're correct or not. And that's it, so thank you very much for your attention and if there are any questions, feel free. <laughs>